I'm Dennis Stanzik. Today, coming to you from one of the conference rooms here at Quantum Energy, the laboratory here in Scottsdale. And we've got an interesting demonstration that we've set up here. We call it the magnetic rail. Uh, kind of like a rail gun, but we want to show uh, some inherent characteristics of a magnet. We've gotten a lot of comments about uh, a variety of our uh, statements and videos, such as uh, uh, carbon and magnetism, the inherent energy in a magnet, um, even some of the bloggers, um, you know, folks that uh, think that they're junior Einsteins that uh, here actually counterdict their own statement from a magnet has no inherent energy to magnet has potential energy. So we're not gonna get into a physics lesson here or debate, uh, there's uh, physics professors and physics experts around the world that are on multiple sides of multiple coins as to what's going on in our universe, including all of the great discoveries uh, that have been made by our uh, new telescope that's in outer space, the Webb telescope, and all the things that it's telling us and revealing uh, to us about the galaxies. So we're gonna leave all that aside because we'd be here for years. And we're just gonna look at a very, very simple demonstration uh, that I had the guys set up. Um, this half of this is wood. This is a, a common rail, you know, typically this thing would be like an arch. And you might have done this in junior high, or if you're a late bloomer, you might have done it in high school. And basically, it's a little kinetic experiment where um, you can roll uh, a series of balls down, and you can see how they uh, move and interact with one another. Um, you might see this too dangled from strings, where you let one go, and the end one takes off, and they hit back and forth. It's the same demonstration. What I had them do is I put a little math into it, um, and I had them cut this at just a little over 10 inches in the center of it, and then I had them machine this uh, rail. So this starts out, this has about a two inch uh, lift here, about 50 millimeters, and down there a little bit larger, um, and it uh, begins to climb right here at this break point and climbs all the way up. So if I let a bearing go, you can see that it stops and then of course it'll roll back to that position. And what we're gonna talk about today is uh, some of the main comments that have been made about magnets uh, and energy. Uh, can magnets do work? Many experts say that magnets can do no work. Other experts say that magnets do do work. Many experts say that magnets uh, have inherent spin. Other people say that they do not. I'm gonna leave that to everybody else. As a matter of fact, I'm not even gonna to come to any conclusions here. I'm gonna let you come to your own conclusions. So we're gonna get into this very quickly. Um, we're gonna set it up as a standard. I wanna show you which one is the magnet. The dark sphere here is the magnet. These are wood, but I just got a regular pair of bench tweezers because these detectors um, are great, but they can be manipulated you know, by my finger and I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna go down. These are regular carbon steel spheres. This one is a magnet, as you can see. I'll drop that one off. And then these are wood, and this is also a uh, just a regular steel sphere. So if we load these up on the rail, um, first we'll just show that they're all about the same uh, weight. So I'll just take each one, we'll go down the rail. That one's got a little bit of a skiff to it. So that's number one, just to show you that they all roll approximately the same. Um, take that one off. Oh, that one went really far. There we go. There's another one. And there we go. And you can see they're all pretty similar. These aren't really precision. Um, you know, and the, we're, not getting to, we're not, not getting into that big of a budget here uh, um, today. So what uh, normally goes on here is this just a little demonstration. In other words, if we take, uh, we can roll the sphere to see how far it goes on the rail. And that, of course, it's getting its force, its acceleration. Um, and we're today looking at work performed. So work, I think we can all agree, is force times distance. Now there's another definition that has to do with 
a path taken and the differential between that. We're not going to get into that uh, uh, the level of discussion here. We're just going to keep it simple and say work is force times distance. Okay, So if I hit a baseball with a baseball bat, it goes x distance. There's work performed on that baseball. Um, the potential energy is obviously stored in my body and acting through, through my arms. This potential energy is just up here on a little 10 inch ramp and it's going to go down and it's going to hit a ball and that ball is going to go there. If I take the same ball that just moved, I'm going to move this down to the dividing line. I hit it again, going to go about the same spot. I'll do it again. Very consistent. So we have a force that's taking place. It is hitting these and they're going to distance. If I move this, and I didn't move it that last time, I'll take a couple of them off just to show you here, and we'll leave that there. Now the force, okay, do another one. Let me move that forward, do another one. Pretty consistent. So that's the force that we're dealing with. I'll leave them all up here, and now I'm going to replace one with a magnet. Here we go, okay, and as you can see, that's got, uh, matter of fact, I'll do it towards my microphone. This has got a uh, pretty hefty lift. I'll put it here by my microphone. You can hear that. It's a fairly strong little sphere of a magnet, and I will attract these over so that you can see that that's a magnet, and there we go. We'll put on vining. Now, what will happen? Um, is there energy? Um, or potential energy stored in that magnet. Um, if I run this sphere down, I let it, I let it fall down on its own, what will happen? Let's take a look. Quite a different result. And I can repeat that. So I take, off, take it off. <laughs> Tough to do with a magnet on there, just a second here. Let me get that back off. And you can see this little sphere is uh, uh, quite powerful for its size. Here we go again. And we can continue to do that. Peel that off again. Now what's taking place here is this sphere, as it gets down towards that magnet, it's going to pick up speed it's going to be acted on. That force from that magnet on that sphere is going to accelerate that at the last minute and make a contact. Matter of fact, I can even do it from half the distance. And it still moves it. And you can continue to do this. Here's another one. That one didn't roll very well. We'll see. There's a good one. Just a little bit slower, but not much slower. So I'm going to gather those back up. I'm going to pull the magnet off and put it here, put steel balls, be right back. We'll let those roll back into place. So what you've seen here is basically the steel demonstration. We just got some, some carbon steel balls. There we go. And that's very consistent. I can continue to repeat that. These aren't going very far. Um, maybe moving an equivalent, a little bit about equivalent distance. But the minute that I put a magnet in the mix, I put the magnet right here. Now when I fire this, and that's also repeatable and very consistent. Pull that off. Doesn't matter how many I have here. Also, the type. So let's say that I don't want to fire carbon steel or stainless steel. I want to fire a piece of wood. Now two of them take off, providing force. We'll do that one more time with another wood sphere, just so you can see it. Let this one come back. And you can see that's quite an incline. So we're not only firing from this short distance. We're, we're firing up, you know, and this has got a, a really nice one inch to three inch rise, about 25 to about 75 millimeter down on that end. So I'll, I'll leave this one out. I'll just fire it with this. There it goes again. That one came off. 
and as you can see, and again, we don't have to be the entire distance um, for this to have an action. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll do one here from about a third of the way down. And as you can see, whoop, laser light move, just a second. So I'll let you come to your own conclusions. Obviously, work was being performed here. And of course, work um, is measured in the science community as joules. Okay? And one joule per second is equal to a watt. Uh, what is a watt? A watt is a measurement, a joule is a measurement of power. We measure like a 100 watt light bulb, a 40 watt light bulb, a 40 watt LED, a kilowatt from a generator, 10 kilowatts from a generator. So these terms that we use, uh, either they're either they're in physics or electrical engineering, are kind of fungible. And a lot of people will blog now or they'll get on that comment line and they'll um, type like, uh, well, like they're junior Einsteins. But here's the thing, uh, we do that every day. Um, it, does your automobile that you have, does it have an engine or a motor? And there are people that will argue for months about the definition of an engine versus a motor. Here we don't really care. We're putting out a product or service um, to make uh, the world a better place and obviously to, uh, to earn a living. So this is a demonstration of magnetic force that has been converted to work. I'm not doing anything. There aren't any electrons going into this system uh, from the outside at all. It's an open system because I'm placing the sphere up here and having it roll down hill. Much like a photon system that we manufacture and sell is an open system. It is not a closed loop system. It has nothing to do with perpetual motion, free energy, uh, has nothing to do with uh, over unity or any of those things. And again, we don't discourage people from running down that path. Um, there, it's just like carbon. I'm going to put several links in here about the fact that carbon can be magnetic. It can be acted on as a, uh, uh, by a magnet. And there are countless articles now. And it's the same thing. If, you have, if you've been out of school for 30 years, um, you may have a degree from a, a great school. But if you haven't set foot in a laboratory, you're not doing practical work if you're doing something else, and you haven't completed at least 15 units a year of continuing education, you might not be up to date on everything that's going on. So I hope this demonstration was a help. Uh, just for fun, we'll do it one more time. Uh, you could build something like this and experiment with magnetism uh, at your own place. I just put my finger on top here, let it roll, boom, there she goes. So you decide. Is that energy? Is that work? What is it? Thank you very much, and we'll see you in future episodes.